Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Dave, the Hillside Gardener, coming back with a little plant profile for you today. And what I have here is commonly known as Red Roselle, also Florida Cranberry, Jamaican Sorrel, and a host of other names. But yeah, so the seeds I got were from Baker Creek, uh, the Red Roselle. Uh, and it's one of these plants I've always wanted to kind of try because I've read so much about it. Uh, a lot of other YouTube videos about it, especially um, some gardeners from Australia I like to watch. Uh, with this plant, uh, being that being said, is much more adapted to a hot climate. I believe it's native to India or even East Africa. So it's commonly grown in those regions and spread throughout uh, Southeast Asia. So definitely uh, in Thai cuisine and things like that, it has uh, definitely, uh, sorry about the passing vehicle there, but check out the flowers here. Uh, they are in the okra family, uh, distantly related. So, or the mallow family. So these flowers bloom early, bloom for one day and that is it. So they're already closed up as it's uh, towards the afternoon, evening time frame. So uh, another one up here. So what happens is uh, after the plant flowers, these right here are little calyxes, or I guess that are inside of this is a seed, a uh, seed that's trying to develop. So these are actually picked off and it's not the seed, but the actual red uh, part here that is uh, taken off, it is dried, it can be frozen, uh, used fresh to make jams, jellies, um, and also flavoring. Uh, you've had hibiscus tea. I'm sure you've been to uh, Starbucks or someplace like that and you've had a hibiscus tea. This is where the flavoring comes from. So yeah, so if you just like hibiscus tea and you really like just want to grow your own thing, you know, you like the whole idea of growing your own, uh, you know, eating from your yard or self-sufficiency or sustainability or whatever catchphrase you want to use for today. But here you go, guys. This is how... Um, what you're looking for is a finished product. So some tips for growing this, it does love hot weather. So in a northern climate, you will need to start this early indoors. Uh, probably use some heat mats to get it going. Don't set it out until well after your first frost because, uh, excuse me, your last frost to make more sense. Anyways, um, this plant, is, as I was growing this in a container and forgive the, uh, the gas meter there, but uh, this is a small pot. I just kind of threw it in there and I really kind of neglected it this summer and it didn't do a whole lot. And then one day it just started taking off. And this is just a lesson for you guys that I probably should know better, you know, but there's some flowers in the way. This is a small 12 inch pot, okay? This plant's gonna get five, six, seven feet tall. This stem, I had no idea was gonna get this big. This is at least an inch thick and it's solid. Um, that being said, with this plant in India, I believe it is very much a popular plant for producing fibers with which ropes and other things like that are made from. So yeah, this is uh, really dense right here. It's almost, almost feels like wood and it's only been growing since May. Uh, I got a late start. I did start some early. I had them in the greenhouse. They kind of got burnt up by the sun. Uh, so therefore I had to start them again late. I only had a couple seeds. So this is kind of just the last ditch uh, effort to kind of grow them. And lo and behold, this one grew. I have one other one. It didn't do as well and it kind of died and I believe it had some animal damage to it. But this plant has not had a bug on it. As I say that, there's an ant crawling on a leaf, but it's not really doing any, any harm there. Uh, the deer have not damaged this. But getting back to the pot, that's what I was trying to get to you. Uh, I think what happened is this plant was doing all right. And then, um, well, you know, there's drainage holes in the bottom of your pots down there. I tried to move this plant. It is stuck to the ground. The roots for this plant have broken through. And once they hit the actual good soil and the dirt down there, they took off. And this plant probably tripled in size within a couple weeks. So yeah, use an appropriately sized pot if you're gonna grow this in a container. I did not anticipate it getting this big. I really should have paid a little bit more attention to the uh, to what to expect, but you know, it's what it is. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these as I'm probably gonna dry these and try my hand at making a jelly or something like that later on, or a juice or something like that, like a spiced drink. That in Jamaica, it's very popular, especially around Christmas time, to get the, uh, well, I guess, uh, you know, you dry out these, you add cloves, cinnamon, sugar, you boil it up, and then you make it into a, uh, it's like a spice Christmas type uh, uh, drink. So I definitely want to try that as uh, I have tons of these little guys. I mean, they're everywhere, all up and down this stem. As you see there, more and more, that's what it looks like before the flower is going to bloom. And as an added bonus, uh, the leaves are edible. Yeah, so you can eat the leaves. Um, they're used in curries. Uh, using African dishes uh, as a source of a green. So if you're in a hot climate and have trouble growing things like uh, spinach or collard or something like that, you know, maybe you want to get something like a, 
like this plant and give it a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause here and go back to the uh, front porch. We're gonna do a little taste test review. All right, guys, back on the front porch, a little taste testing review of my red roselle, Jamaican sorrel, whatever you wanna call it. it, has multiple names. So these are fresh picks. So what basically you do is you're gonna pull these little petals off here. And you're gonna get the little uh, red part here from the calyx. A little bit closer, give you guys that shot. Is it gonna focus? I don't know. Focus. So anyways, there you go. Uh, as you see in there, in here you got the, uh, that's the immature seed that's developing right here, the green part. So what you're gonna do is just pull these guys off like this, as you see there, nice little red, and just uh, give it a taste. Mm. Now see, I had tried these a little bit ago, I was trying to place the flavor for this, and I believe that uh, the way I best describe this is a like a red mulberry. I know you're probably gonna think I'm crazy. People say cranberries or something like that. I don't know. Cranberries to me are extremely tart, especially when you get fresh ones. They're not really good to eat by themselves. But this actually tastes like like a red mulberry berry. Maybe slightly underripe, a little bit of tartness. If you're out berry picking and you get like a like a blackberry or a raspberry from the well, you're foraging in the woods or something. It's slightly underripe. You kind of get that flavor. So it's a little bit of just a tartness. Um, it's really good. There's not a lot of sweetness to it, but it's not overpoweringly sour that it wouldn't be enjoyable. So I guess I can see where this would be a good flavoring for a tea. Um, but that being said, when they do make drinks from this, they add other spices and a lot of sugar uh, to make it a sweetener because this is not has enough. This does not have enough natural sweetener to stand on its own. So there's definitely that. Really good, really good. All right, and so for an added bonus, no, it's not a pot leaf. This is the leaf from the Roselle. And like I said, these are edible, uh, used in a lot of curries and things like that, added to African uh, dishes, very popular. Uh, so it's very good for a hot weather green. I don't know if you're supposed to eat an entire meal of these, but there are definitely an additive, like you would put spinach or something into a, uh, a stew or something like that, just uh, kind of wilt it down at the end. A lot of Italian dishes put uh, some kale that is wilted down into the dish uh, towards the end to give it a little bit of greenness and uh, flavoring and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these because they are supposedly edible and um, hope for the best of eating a leaf. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's very sour. Like, really sour. Has a really, uh, very, my mouth is puckering. Kind of like that, uh, Ooh, if you eat like an unripe persimmon, kind of puckers your mouth a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if I'd eat that just straight up by itself. This is a pretty young leaf. Usually, uh, if you're gonna have a, you know, young tender leaves, you're gonna have to be the best tasting. I don't know, I would not eat this by myself. Um, it's all right. Maybe, maybe like in a, uh, a curry or something with a lot of other spices as just a little bit of taste, uh, tanginess, tanginess maybe I'm trying to get the flavor out. But uh, yeah, it's a, uh, That's a really weird taste. It doesn't taste like grass. Like you get like some, like a leaf on a tree or something that you would think that just tastes like that really grassy flavor. It does have a very unique taste for it. So if you are adventurous and you want to try growing this plant for the greens, be my guest, but you might be on your own for eating it because unless it tastes better cooked, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that by itself. But yeah, so uh, there's that. Anyways guys, Roselle, it's an awesome plant. Um, I'm gonna pick these uh, as a harp, as they ripen probably gonna dry them all out and probably sometime this winter I'll make a video talking about how I made a juice or a tea or a, a refreshing drink. The, I might try that Christmas, that Jamaican uh, Christmas drink with the uh, sorrel, um, the sugar, cloves, nutmeg, etc, etc. I believe there might be ginger in there as well and give that a shot. So Dave, uh, this is Dave the Hillside Gardener. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Please subscribe and I will see you next time here at the Hillside showing you some uh, more unusual plants or some just random things I'm doing uh, to pass the time. We'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.